No. It says me on live stream. Got it. Do I need another phone? No, you're good. Okay. All right. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone on Facebook. Hey, everyone. Come on in. Come on in as we get ready to do this great Bible talk conversation. Uh, we back at it again. Uh, you, you know what this is? This is the summer edition. Uh, I'm back at here again by God's grace and mercy. <laughs> Another day to uh, be a part with you and share with you. Uh, what God has been sharing with me uh, during this season. I got um, some a special guest with me here today. He's going to he's gonna tag along with me on today. I'm going to bring him back another day as well. Uh, from this Wednesday all the way to September the 6th, we're going into our uh, season of summer edition uh, with with me and uh we're going to do bible talk conversation and what i mean by bible talk conversation is meaning having uh talking the word giving our thoughts giving our opinions having a dialogue a conversation uh this is a known fact i don't know if you know the sound the best way a person can learn is through dialogue with their peers yeah. number one fact number one fact it's not by a lecture or a presentation or anything, but the number one method, a way of learning something is through dialogue with your peers and through conversation. All right. So we're going to do things different here. We're going to have Bible talk conversation. We're going to talk about some great things. Uh, we're going to talk about um, our topic for this, this summer. Okay. This summer. I was ready. It's called loading. Please wait. Loading. Please wait. I know. I know. I know. I know, Sam. I know. We are in a generation. <laughs> when we say loading, we don't know what to do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I almost lost my cool um, about, about four o'clock because I was trying to get this stuff together. And when I say <laughs> um uh my laptop did like oh software update oh okay but, uh, okay all right all right so let me just go ahead and get the software update just go ahead and get this over and done with <laughs> you know you think of most software updates is it's not going to take long it's going to take what maybe two or three minutes max nah tell me why apple. my software update was a whole hour man <laughs> that's apple oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Apostolic. No, what we're not gonna do is talk about I'm, Apple. Okay. I'm it's, not, it's, it's, I'm it's my saying. fault. I know, I know. It's my fault. It's my it's fault. Loading, it's loading. <laughs> it's loading. And it was look, look, as the, it was updating the software, I'm sitting here looking at it and looking at the clock, looking at it, looking at the clock, looking at it, looking at the clock. I'm like, oh man, this ain't. This 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 ain't gonna work out. This ain't gonna work out. I need I need to get my laptop. I gotta get my stuff together. Look look. Went to the bathroom. And everything came back. Oh my god. Look what's going on. What is going on? It's still it's still over. And then it got the nerve to tell me how long, how much time it had remaining. I said, um, oh, your oh. time remaining does not match my time remaining. We said ten minutes, ten minutes never ago. Knows. <laughs> never knows. No, no, it never match. So I, I, I don't know what clock they're running by, but I, I don't agree with that clock. Okay, I don't agree with it. All right. First of all, uh, let's go ahead and do this, and we're gonna do a little prayer, and then we're gonna go into this. Okay, and I want to first thank you, uh, for being a part of this conversation, being part of this Bible talk conversation this week, opening up with me, in our summer edition Bible talk. Okay, I appreciate that. I want to make sure I give you your flowers. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. got it. Man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, God, we thank you on today for another chance, another opportunity. Lord, we thank you for everything that we have faced upon today everything that we have dealt with, all the situations, the persecution, the trials, the tribulations, the, the traffic, the good report, the bad report. Lord, we thank you for everything because your word has said, give thanks in everything. So God, we just want to thank you and, we, and honor you on today for all that you have done for us. So God, we ask you right now, as we have dialogue, as we have faith talk conversation, as we have biblical conversation, Lord, we ask you that you dwell with us in the midst. Allow someone who's going to watch this or watch this on replay, feel uh, your presence or so wanting to share their comments, being the example of a testimony of God in this season. Lord, we thank you now because God, you're calling us to testify all of your good testify all the things that you can do lord we want to honor you on that and so god we thank you as we go forth lord allow allow your presence or take and allow your tongue your words to be said in these times in jesus said in jesus name amen amen all right so look look uh uh, uh our, our topic is um loading please wait and we are talking about waiting the waiting the waiting of the lord um first before we get into uh you know we're just going to give y'all an overview for the next eight weeks of what we will be talking about uh during this time okay so i want y'all to be with us be patient with us uh that here it goes there that word patient be patient with us as we go through this, yeah. As we go through this, uh, 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 this process, okay. Go through in this process during this Bible talk conversation. So, if you got any comments, please go ahead and post it. Come on, chime on in. Please share, like, and also please go ahead and so, uh, so on our cash app. So at uh, money symbol three one three W R M. Or you can go to our Giveify, go to the Giveify app and so on, Word Restoration Ministries, okay? Word Restoration Ministries in Detroit, Michigan. So, Sam. Yes, Sam, sir. Sam, Sam, Sam. Uh, first of all, let, let, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let, let the people know who you are. Um, I'm Sam Jones. I currently attend Word Restoration Minist Ministries. I'm 26. And, yeah. 26? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. 26. Whole 26. Man. Whole yeah, 26. Yeah. Uh, he, he said he's a whole 26, not a whole 25 and a half, but a whole 26. Yeah. Piece. That's like 30 knocking patiently, too. <laughs> it's creeping up. It's, it's creeping. Cre it's creeping up. Um, Sam, I want to do this. Let's talk about waiting. Let's talk about what is your definition, your definition of waiting? What is your definition of waiting? Not, you know, biblical, your definition. What is your definition? Waiting. Waiting is just, it's, it's what it means. You know, I can't even describe it no, no further than that. Um, when you wait, typically you, you trying to sit or whether you doing whatever you're doing, you you pay you patiently waiting. Mm -hmm. So I I can't define it no different than that. It is what it says in its own def definition, but waiting sometimes it's hard. And on the other side, sometimes it's it's good for you. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. What's the hardest thing about waiting in your mind? I would have to feel like, for instance, like it's just like if your car breaks down and you know you got to get from A to B, that wait is it, tough because you're like, man, I got to do this, I got to do that. But at the same time, you have to you have to think like, okay. Maybe I need to slow down because maybe this was a sign, you know, mm -hmm. that I got to wait. 
wait till everything get finished, wait till their cars, you know, everything is good. So, yeah. You know what? You you, you sound very spiritually, uh, very spiritually mature when you uh, say uh, when you come into the realization, I need to slow down when you're doing that waiting period. How did you get there? Because you're 26. And look how, you know, you, you sound very spiritually mature and you gave a great example, a great analogy when you talk about your car breakdown, you're on the side of the road, you call in AAA. Now you oh, man. on someone to help you to get to your yeah. destination. That's the you hardest that, part right there. Catch up to that later. Now you're waiting on someone to help you to get to your next destination. Waiting. How, waiting, how, waiting. Yeah. How you how wait. how did you get there, sir? How did you come to that point? I don't I don't even remember, but at the same time, I, I feel like it's just growth over the years because when I was younger, being to patiently wait for something, that was unheard of. It was like mm -hmm. I'm I'm way overwhelmed at this part. Like it's blowing me, blowing my mind at this point. So to wait for something like that or to have that patience, man, this is it's a <laughs> it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Yeah. It is a gift. It is it's a gift. A gift who people don't understand. Uh uh uh, uh patience. It is a gift. And uh, I, I would like to, uh, 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 you know, give you your flowers on that for understanding that, it, that patience is a gift from God uh, um, and had to go through your trials and your tribulations uh, during that waiting uh, as you, you know, spiritually grow. I had to give you your flowers for that. But let me ask you this. Uh, what would you say? Because you're 26. You're 26. What would you say? to someone in your age group first of all uh your background you know you, you know you had a praying grandma you know you uh were was raised you know in your high school they say you from high school and on you was raised through much you know you went to church and everything but there was a time and period where oh uh, yeah i know you remember that <laughs> yeah remember yeah days? i remember them days yeah. man. Growing up in the church. Growing up in church, man. There was something always about church, but um right, right. What can I say? Um it's it's crazy because we're on the topic. And that's what I normally tell everybody to just be patient, you know, um from a God standpoint. A spiritual standpoint, waiting. My grandmother always taught me to never screw. We not even gonna talk about that. Um, just how she structured me growing up in a church household. I had to, you know, make sure everything was laid out. I had to make sure my clothes was laid out or. Wake up on a set, wake up at a certain time. So, man, I I don't know, but so patient to be waiting for that day. It was just like it was it was something different. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I what I would tell my generation. That's tough. I feel like the people in my generation, they they want everything so quick. They want they want it now, like for it to drop out of the sky right now. So I would say just to wait, wait on God, because that's the best thing for you to do. And even though we don't like waiting, well. I don't like waiting because let's be honest. I, we don't we don't like the yeah, waiting. I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't like waiting, but at the same time, when you wait on God to move, 
it's, it's a whole different experience. You know what I'm saying? You you learn some you learn some things actually by waiting. You know, you learn how to you know just trust in God. You, know, you have time to think. You have time to plan. So that's the best part. I've, I have to say, and that's what I will have to say to my generation is to just patiently wait, wait on God. See, I, I, you see, you hit on some key points, some key points when you said that, sir, uh, because um, people don't understand there is a lesson in the waiting. Absolutely. There is a lesson in the waiting. And everything you do. is <laughs> is a, a, a lesson that will change the makeup of your of your uh, of your uh, your generations of your seeds of your children's children there's a, a lesson in the waiting and you know what you say it's some things that really hit point um and i actually want to expound on it because even more because we are going to talk about um we're going to talk about uh uh, uh, let me make sure I say, you know, I see some people on here. I want to say, well, hey, uh, uh, hey, Dana, hey, Kim, how y'all doing? Uh, you make less, uh, yeah, Dana hit it right on a point. She said, you make less mistakes when you're waiting. Uh, but I That's want to bring, huh? That's the goal. Make less mistakes while you're waiting. So, look, this is what I want to do. I want to share something real quick. I want you to hit uh, flow with me as we do this, okay? I want to share something with everyone um, because I think this is will be a great uh, segment going into uh, what we'll be talking about uh, in the upcoming weeks, okay? Uh, I want to go and talk about that, okay? You see my screen? Yeah. All right. Uh, do, do, do. All right. Look, so we're going to talk about waiting. Okay. We're talking about waiting. We're talking about waiting. So I know we got to be visual. So I'm trying to be a little visual with this. Okay. Let me tell you what waiting means. Okay. So let me tell you what waiting means. Uh, cause waiting, uh, uh is a very, <laughs> a word that a lot of us don't like use, but we use it a lot of times. <laughs> So, be strong. Hell, yeah, waiting would uh, test your strength. But just put it like that. It would test your strength. Okay. Uh, here we go. Waiting, the word wait means to hope. Okay. To hope, to accept, to trust, to hope, and trust the Lord requires faith, patience, humility. Meekness, oh, here it goes, this word. Um, a lot of people don't like using it. Long-suffering, okay? Keep it in the commandments. Enduring to the end. There is no cheat code in this. When God has you on a waiting period, there's no cheat code. To wait upon the Lord means planting the seed of faith and nourish me and nourish it okay that's what that means okay because when you're waiting no. your faith has to increase Absolutely. like prime example prime example uh, uh uh i remember there was a time when um i was looking for uh, for some results to come in on an interview that I had. I'm just waiting, just waiting. I know I had a great time. Uh, I know uh, I did. You know how you know how you when you go on a job interview, you know you like you know you aced it. Like, oh, this yeah. job is mine. Have you ever had? Okay, no one ever done it. You have you ever had a job interview? You know, you know. Have you ever had a job interview where you're waiting on and you know? that you ace it 
and you like, I got, I got this it. Shot. This is it. I got it. You know, you you pray the Bible. You know how you go in before the interview. You do your prayers and everything. You said, Lord, you know, if will, Lord, if this is the job for me, Lord, let it be mine. You know, you you do your prayers and you go in there with the confidence. Uh, uh, you know, uh, what I usually do, I love put a little anointing oil on my hands. So when I shake their hand, they you know, they, they never, 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 never. That's another secret. That's that's job secrets one on one. Anyway, you one on two. Yeah. Uh, we had a little anointing oil, you know, a little oil on my hand. When they shake it, they they get the oil, they get an oily experience. But that ain't the point. Uh, and you know, you shake their hand, you you know, you greet them eye to eye, you give them a nice firm handshake, you sit at the table, you sit in the right seat, because most people don't understand there's a seat that you're supposed to sit in when you're in the interview. There's a, a proper way of making sure you're in the right seat to address it, but that's a whole nother subject. We'll get to that later. But anyway, uh 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 and you like you're having a great conversation. You the interview went from you know an interview will go 15, 30 minutes. You end up being in an interview for four hours. So you're saying to yourself, like, oh man, you know, we we like best friends now. We about to go grab something neat after this. So, you know, you think you, yeah. you have the interview. So I'm just using me a prime example. I'm telling you, went on in this interview. I'm waiting. One week passed. Nothing. No. Crickets. I check my email. <laughs> you know, you know how you check your email when you get an email or that notification on your phone. Quick. Okay, you like. Oh, dang Quick. Dang it. Dang it. Dang dang Two weeks man. passed, Sam. So. Nothing. Hurt. All right. I'm so hurt. My confidence <laughs> level is still up. I, I'm still up there. I'm like. Hey, they just waited on, you know, hey, this is like the third quarter, you know, about to go into the fourth quarter. So I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. Three, four, five, eight, 12, 16, 22. <laughs> I'm talking about weeks, people. Weeks. That's a lot. You know what my favorite is? In the garbage. <laughs> it's in the garbage. It's in the garbage. It's in the garbage. Okay. It's in the garbage. <laughs> like 22 weeks. Now I'm like, all right, God. Okay. I got to still be I'm, at this. This is not for me. Okay. I hear you. <laughs> Look for something else. <laughs> that that like, I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm like, you know what? I don't want no one to say anything. Matter of fact, it got so petty where even the company name, I just like it cringed me. Like mm, I get upset. Like I don't want to see it. And I and it's so funny it happened. I started running into people that work there. Wow. Like, hey, hey, I heard I saw you at the interview. You know, what's coming about? I thought you was supposed to start over here. I haven't heard anything, bro. <laughs> Don't tell me. Don't tell me nothing <laughs> like that. You know how people are. They'll be like, man, I saw you at the interview. I thought you were coming over here. Don't say nothing to me. <laughs> Don't say nothing. You know, uh, 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 what is it? Um, uh, yeah, Minister Watt, yeah. I am I, I am wrong for saying it's hard waiting. Yeah? No, you're not wrong. Hey, you, you're not wrong for saying it's hard waiting. Waiting is hard. But, it is hard. And anyone else tell you that waiting is not hard or they never been through a waiting period. They never really wait up on the Lord for some results. For a uh a, a answer to uh, uh to a problem that you're dealing with. Not for Especially real. when you want something now. Yeah. You need something now. Right. Have you ever had that where like God, you know, I need your answer now. I know your time is not my time. I understand that, God. I understand that. You know, I'm not. I'm not trying to rush I'm you. Not, anything. I'm not trying to rush you, God. But, uh, uh but uh, it is. You know. You know, it's ninety days overdue. Lord, <laughs> you know, you gave me great mercy these ninety days, but it's ninety days. 
I need I need answers, Lord. I'm but waiting. anyway, you know, waiting is hard, and we have to be honest about that. Waiting is hard. Waiting is more difficult than uh uh, uh I would say more difficult than um. How can I put this? Because I don't want to offend anyone. <sighs> How can I put this? Waiting is more difficult than um, when you waiting is more difficult because of some fact your commitment to the Lord get tested. You get distracted easily. You get easily influenced easily. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, waiting on God and waiting on a response, waiting on uh, on a rebuttal from the Lord or a move or a shift or just him saying the word. You know, when, you know when, when I'm thinking about waiting on God, there's, there's, there's a problem with the word. Like he's talking to you and he's like, oh, it's coming. You know what I'm saying? He says little things. You know, he gives you signs. He's like, okay, I see you, Lord. I see you. I see you responding, Lord. Then there's a way a different way. He's not responding at all. Have you ever heard that before? I, I, I'm, I'm the only one that's been in that bit where when you're waiting on God and, you know, he went from responding to no response, like, it's like you calling someone's phone number, your phone, someone's phone that you've been talking to for like three years, and all of a sudden their number is disconnected. You hit that. <laughs> this number is no longer in service. You're like, wait, wait, wait a minute. I just, wait a minute. What, what you mean? Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. So you go back to that last text message you sent, <laughs> and it comes back with that symbol like, oh, it's not delivered. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm the only one ever felt like that. Like you get that not delivered, like, oh, what what you mean not delivered? It didn't go through. So you oh, pick so up someone else's phone, phone, like, hey, <laughs> hey, dial this number for me. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, waiting is not for the faint of heart. All right. Waiting is not for the faint of heart. All right. So look, this is what I want to do. I want to go over. Because uh, we at the halfway point, I want to go over some the things that we're going to be talking about the next eight weeks. Oh, uh, they didn't feel me. They they was out there. Do you understand? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dana. All right. Here was the overview of the lessons that we will be going over here, talking about the phases of waiting. Okay. The next eight weeks, we're going to talk about the phases of waiting. Each week is going to have its own topic, and we're going to talk about it, okay? The phases of waiting, okay? Sam, you let me know which one you want to come back for, okay? All right? First, first one, okay, you got to understand. The first one, this is the most critical one. It's the shut up and listen part. I, I know, I know, I'm, I know I'm wrong for saying shut up, but God darn it. God be saying some things, saying "shut up." You be you're complaining. You whining. You're complaining so much. You're not allowing God to talk to you. Ooh, I know that hurt. That's deep. It's deep, but it's true. It is. Because this is what we do in the during the period, uh, period of waiting. We talk to our friends, we talk to our colleagues, we talk to our spouses, or we talk to our children, we talk to the trees, we talk to our therapists about, look, about the whole process of waiting and how we're dealing with things and how we cope with it. And then we go, we try to go to God about it. We just tell him the report that he already knows because he puts you in the situation. Yeah. Y'all forget. He's all knowing. Y'all forget the devil got to ask him permission to attack you. You forgot that God will put you in a situation where he knows you can't handle this blessing until you understand 
the process of this blessing and appreciation of you of this blessing of you being a good steward of this blessing like god could have put you a, a multi-millionaire at the age of 21 sam you know why why because at 26 you know you all that money be gone yeah yeah let's be honest church. come on church Absolutely. Dude. you know a uh, twenty-one year old me, no, nah, you give me the multi-million. Oh no, bro, that money's gone. By the time I hit twenty-five, it's gone. <laughs> hey, hey, look, I don't even know where it went. He said, "How much?" I don't even know where it went. Man, can't even imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm many saying. things, you know. All right. I'm just telling you, so we have to know how to shut up and listen during the waiting period. All right. Week number two. Week number two, people. Guess what? What did I say? Costly choices during the waiting period. The bad decisions that we make during the waiting period. The people that we entertain during the waiting period. The other voices that we listen to while we waiting. Sam? I know one yeah. I know that one hurt though. I know that one hurt. Because oh, I, I know during the period of time when I wait, when I was waiting, guess what? I made some bad choices. Yeah. You made some bad choices, Sam? Yeah, absolutely. It cost you. It cost you time. Mm -hmm. It it costs just moving in that route without waiting on God. It's just it's it's very. How can I say it, man? That that's it's tough. It's you, you, it's tough because you and then. I, Hold on, hold on. Is that, so during the waiting period, when you make a bad choice, when you make a bad choices, and then it seemed like God put you on another delay. Yep. Moving you ever, backwards. Look, look, look. I, I, this is how I feel every time. Uh, this is just my look. Look, you know, I'm a preacher at heart, and Bishop said this plenty of times over the pulpit. Uh, you know, preachers can get a summer out of anything. There was a time. In my life, when uh, when I fly, you know, fly Delta, I never had delayed flights. I never experienced a delayed flight in my life. Okay, never, never, because you know I always fly Delta. You know, I they usually I I, I know people who ever flew Delta. You know, they probably had some times where you know they probably had to delay or maybe ten or fifteen minutes. I never. Okay. This one time I made a choice to go with a different airline. Oh, geez. Instead of, yeah. yeah. You, I'm just, I look, look, look at the spiritual, look at this spiritually, okay? Look at it spiritually. The one time I made a decision, I, singular, I made the decision to go a different route because I felt like, I felt like it was cost efficient. Instead of just going ahead and go through that process and wait, yeah. you know, and wait for, you know, the, the prices go down, you know, you know, come on, we, you know, when we try to book a flight, you know, we, we wait, we just wait on the price drop. But I was so in the rush and so eager, I made a bad choice. I get on the flight. Dana, I hope you hear me. Look, Dana, Dana, I hope you hear me on this. I made a bad choice. Got on the airline. On the plane. Sat there and we were delayed for two hours. I'm on the plane. I'm on the plane. I'm not in the, I'm, I'm not, I'm talking about, I'm not in the airport. I'm on the plane. Yeah. I feel like I was being punished. And I'm saying, God, oh, why? Minute, <laughs> why me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why? Why, God? 
And then look, look, get to my look, get to my destination, my final destination, right? On the way back. Because you remember, I made a bad choice, so I still flew with the same <laughs> bad choice. Encounter another delay. Not one delay, not two, not three. Four delays. Oh. And that's what happens when we make bad choices during the waiting period. There's a delay that happens. There's a hold up. I hope, I hope you're getting this. We, we're just talking about the topics that we're going to be talking about for the next eight weeks, okay? These are just the topics, okay? So, so this is just the topics. This is just the first two. The first, the first one alone is going to be uh, uh, next week. Next week, Wednesday, when we talk about shut up and listen, I guarantee you I'm going to have someone call me and go off on me. Okay, I mean, no, I promise you. Everybody's gonna, gonna have something to say. <laughs> like, wait, wait, we, let's go back to the party. We talk about well, shut up and listen. Yes, shut up yeah. and listen. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, costly choices. Okay. All right. We three. All right, Sam. We three. Mm -hmm. The emotional roller coasters of waiting. Minister, I, I, you know, it's, it's the Lord's will. I pray that God give you strength right now uh, um, in this, in your waiting period. Strength and endurance and stamina. Standing on his word, not people's word, not your family's word, not your mother's word, but your, but his word. Okay, the emotional roller coasters that we go through during the waiting period. There, yes, there is an emotional roller coaster that we go through. We go from happy to sad, angry, depressed, anxiety, panic attacks. Uh, then we go back to being joyful, then go right back into stress, go back into worrying, going back and being uh uh uh, 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 um, being bitter. Yes, bitterness takes place in the, during this waiting period because of the fact you start seeing God doing other things for other people, and you're saying, "What God? Are, why am I still waiting?" But you're blessing them. That is a sign from God saying, "Hey, I'm at your door. It's coming." The emotion yeah. roller coaster. That's week three, Sam. The emotional roller coaster. Ooh. There's I mean, so, do, yeah. There's, I mean, do we, there's so many. So many, like you just said. Just yes. yes, Dana. This this encouragement. Yeah. Trying to find the encouragement to uplift yourself, mm -hmm. keep yourself lifted. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I, I, I believe we need to understand uh, in your waiting period and during emotional roller coaster, we got to understand, know how to encourage ourselves like David did. Remember that in Second Samuel, the thirtieth chapter, verse number, uh, verse number eight. Beforehand, David was out in war with his people, his chosen people, his road dogs, his ride or dies. They just conquer another village, conquer another country. They come back and realize everything is gone. The wives, the children. Their precious belongings. Now, what's funny, Sam? The same, the same, the same, the same midget, you know, the same midgets, okay? The same midgets, okay? 
the same yeah. midgets. Okay? Yeah. They went with him, fought battles with him, got mad at David, and blamed him for what has happened back at home base. Wow. They got so mad and upset, they wanted to kill him. So when we go through this emotional roller coaster, we want to find out who's ready for you. Ooh, 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 ooh. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about when you're at your lowest and lows during your waiting period in your in-between blessings. That's why I called it. In between your in-between blessings or your in-between of your transitioning of your seasons. Uh, 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 you realize there's going to be a shifting that takes place where people are going to fall off and you're going to realize that you're all on this island alone. Alone. When you're down on your knuckles alone. <laughs> Man, I'm just saying. So, David had so. to go and David had to go encourage himself. He had to step away from his people. And encourage himself and talk to God. Well, later on in that text, that uh, was really fun about it. Um, in that text, later on in that chapter, when David was about to go take back everything, everyone gets happy about how um, God told David go and told David to go and conquer it. Right? Everyone gets happy. Everyone gets happy. Oh, God told him go back and conquer it, take it, everything. Right? Because he heard from God. Everyone gets happy about that. No one pays attention or understand the significance of what happens after that. When he's headed towards them to battle, he moves those people on the way. He lost 100 because they couldn't cross the sea. He lost another 100. Just to prove a point. God was proving a point to him like, I don't care how big your army is or how many people are around you. I'm going to show you who's really for you. And I, I want to show you that I'm your source when you're waiting. I need you to depend on me in your waiting. The emotional roller coasters. I'm telling you. Yeah. The emotional roller coaster. It's the truth. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. When he show you who, who's really for you, man. It's a blessing. All the yes. people that wasn't, they just, they, they drift away. They drift away. And some people going to fall off and show their true colors mm -hmm. to you this season on your wedding. And it would be the same people that you've been praying for. Countless times it would be the same ones that you've helped out. Yeah. Have to move accordingly. Mm -hmm. You're right, Dana. Trust him when you can't even you can't even trace him. Yes, I'm telling. Absolutely. Now, uh, uh, week number four, Sam. Week number four. Okay. Countless hires, tries, countless tries to quit. So, in your waiting period, you want to say to God, "I quit. I give. I give up. I give up." Uh, 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 I don't know if uh, if people really want to be real. There's some other words that you probably use in the context yeah. when you talk it <laughs> like <laughs> this. Is You know what I'm saying? You, you, there are some words that you use. I feel some type of way. Feel some type of way. I feel some type of way, God. Now, wait a minute. I've been faithful. Oh. Wait a minute. I say yes to your will. I say yes to your will. I've been praying. God, God you remember, remember, remember that time when you know I was out there slinging and I was moving bricks and you called me. I was doing what that was. I said yes to you. 
Not like you could have chose any one of my family. You could have chose any one of my brothers or sisters. You bet you chose me, and I said yes. Now, I didn't yeah. know when I say yes, that it comes with this. Yeah, no. <laughs> God, you know, even even food products give me awareness symbols. It's one of signs. Yeah. So the countless tries to quit. Trust and believe. There's been plenty of times I quit, tried to quit. I ended up finding myself back in the place. Of, okay, well. All right, well, well, they're just going to go through the next day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then it's emotions with that, too. Oh. It all ties together. It all ties yeah. together. <laughs> because there's going to be moments in your countless tries to quit when you try to take yourself out the game, when the enemy tried to tell you to take yourself out the game. Waving that white flag. I'm like, hey, can't do it. So I want to put this in here because it helped me with this. I rebuke the enemy now to try to just speak into your ear gates when you are facing adversity, when you are facing the waiting, when you are facing the trials and the tribulations to try to tell you that you need to quit, you need to give up, you need to go back to your old ways, you need to go, you know how to make, a, if you need, if you know you if you know how to get what you need to get because you got these other people waiting for you to to you to ask. So I want to beat that spirit now. For those who ever watch it, whoever watches on replay, that God may cover your ear gates. That the only voice that you hear is his. Not others. But the only voice that you hear is his. In the waiting period. Because in some fact during the waiting period, it's too many noise. There's so much noise around you, so many distractions around you. Remember, the Bible says the enemy was trying to shift you as wheat. So when you're waiting, you become weak. But the Bible says every time that you are weak, I make you strong. Thank you, Lord. I lift you up. I want you to be weak because, in fact, I want to show you how strong I am. That's how, that, that's the type of guy we serve. In my lows of lows, in my weakest the weakest, in the moments of my insecurity, in the midst of all of my flaws, in the midst of my quickness, in my raggedy self, God still says, I got you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. Week number five, we've got to talk about it. We got to figure out, we got to have an understanding about the things that we do while we're waiting. There's things that we need to do while we're waiting. So, you don't understand, there's a, 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 a process. Like when you go to rehab, like, have anyone ever had an encounter or had like a sports injury? There's certain things you got to yeah. do. Prep work. It's a lot of prep work. Yeah. Just because you had the surgery, guess what? You got to go through the physical therapy. Yeah. You got to put weight on that leg. I'm talking about when you ever had, if you ever had a leg injury, that makes no time. So you had the surgery the next day or a couple of days later, you had physical therapy. And if you're strong enough, that that mental that mental ability got to be there too. True. Sure. It you got can, to. You, it's you mental. Talk, you talk to facts, bro. It's mental. Things to do while while waiting on God. All right. So the very next one. Okay. How can I trust God while waiting? Hmm. Gotta give it all to him. 
How can I trust God when I have no food in the house? How can I trust God when literally I'm at a quarter tank of gas and I don't see no type of income coming in? How do how can I trust God when I see time and time again people in my family have cancer or had diabetes and they die of that disease? But you're telling me that you're going to heal me. How can I trust God when it seems like the more I depend on him, the heartache gets? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. I mean, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be emotional. And it's okay to be emotional because God made us human and we need to release it. I'm just saying. I feel you. Waiting doesn't mean your life suddenly goes on hold. How to live on during your waiting. But you know, this is something, Sam, I know this a lot when people are going through that period of waiting or the period of, of you know, of in between. <clears throat> Excuse me. In between this, they put everything on hold. Every, yeah, it's like life stops. And there's, you so focus around, you so focus with yourself. Instead of you know putting God first and talking to Him, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So we're we're gonna talk about how you still can go on in your waiting period. Okay, okay. Uh, a lot of these subjects intertwine with each other. A lot of these subjects does. But during these eight weeks, we're gonna talk about them. We're going to go in detail with it. We're going to help one another out because this conversation, I'm telling you in this conversation, like I told y'all before, uh, the best way to learn is through conversation, dialogue with your peers, learning from your peers. That's why it's so important when the, in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in the Bible where it talks about testimony, by overcoming in testimony, how we overcome in testimony. Because we yeah. see and hear how someone in my when in my current predicament, who is now that is their past predicament, and now how they have overcome and how they turned out. Uh, bless you. Yeah, bless you. So we're going to share testimonies. We're going to help one another. We're going to up uh, uh, encourage one another during this period of loading. And waiting. Because that's what it is. When we are waiting, God is loading, downloading in us, updating some stuff. I hate to sound like a, a computer game, but uh, taking out any type of antiviruses out of us, diagnosing us. Seeing anything that is impure that will stop uh, making us uh, not run correctly to uh, 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 how he created us to be. Stalling that that good software. That good software. That long last. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing we're going to talk about is being aware of God's promises. During the waiting period, for some reason, somehow, some way, we always forget of God's promises. I don't I don't understand it. I don't know how I understand like every day trials and tribulations. I don't understand we just get we forget God's promises. We forget them. Yeah. 
got to stay true to yourself and realize that God is all we need for sure. That's all we need. So I want to thank everyone for coming out today. And we're going to leave out on this. So we're going to leave out in every conversation we have for these next eight weeks. We're going to leave out on a God's promise. Okay, on a God's promise. We're going to leave out. So here's God's promise to every one of us, okay? Every one of us. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verse number 31. But though, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's God's promise. That's a promise. That's Those a promise. who wait upon the Lord shall renew strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's his promise. You're not going to be weary. You're not going to be fake. And you're going to soar over your situation because he gave you wings to be above your situation, above your turbulence, above your storms. Above unfamiliar foundations and surfaces. So that's God's promise. So we want to thank you on today for being here, being with us. Hit that like button, hit that share button. Be with us on next week as we start with shut up and listen. Okay, shut up and listen, Sal. That's what we're going to do with next week. Shut up and listen. I, think I might come back for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you we'll have Sal come back next week. Maybe we can get someone else also on here before we can have this real conversation. Uh, hopefully, maybe we can see if we can get Dana on here before we can have this conversation. <laughs> Let's see if we can get Dana on here. But yeah, for real, we're going to talk about next week. Shut up and listen. Um, during the loading and waiting, please, uh, unloading and waiting period uh, of this um, waiting period of your life, okay? These are the phases of waiting. We're going to talk about it. We're going to hit it. I hope y'all stay tuned. Trust and believe this is going to be a very interesting ride. And I can't wait to have these conversations with y'all and share with one another. Now, remember God's promise. We're always going to end out with God's promise. Yeah. Okay. But they who wait for the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. All right? That's God's promise. That's his promise. promise. So take that with you for the rest of the week. Take that with you in the workplace. Take that with you in your situation. Speak it wherever you go. Uh, declare it, decree it. Throw the oil over, put the blood on it. Just letting you know that's God's promise. I ain't never seen his promises never been fulfilled. Almost 40 years of my life. I've never seen God's promise never been fulfilled. I, why are you laughing? I don't know what to what say. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me, Sam. Anyway. <laughs> you're going to start laughing. Ah, you so, right, you're so petty. Anyway. Uh... Next week, Sam, we're going to do this again. We're going to try to see if you get Dana on here next week before we can do this. I'm pretty sure Dana will enjoy this. Yeah. And, uh, remember, God's promise. Isaiah 40, okay? Isaiah 40 and 31. That's God's promise. We're going to take that with us all week long. In the car, grocery store, wherever we go, at the doctor's office, at the bank, at the lender, we're going to all of it. We're, we're taking it with us. Okay? All right, we're decreeing it now. 
Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you on today for another chance and another opportunity to go in your word. Lord, we thank you for the conversation. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together on one accord. Your word has says, where two or three are gathered in my in your midst, that you are dwelling right there, Lord. Lord, we thank you now for just being in, in the midst of us as we come to, to fellowship you, oh God, to celebrate you, to do all the things, to lift you up, oh God, to give you the glory and honor. Because God, we understand and realize someone's going to be saved through this. Someone's going to be healed through this. Someone's going to have a breakthrough for this because you your glory is going to be revealed. And we cannot wait for the testimonies after this, God. We cannot wait for the report of the Lord. We cannot wait to hear the victory report. We can't wait to hear the healing report. We can't wait to hear the restoration report. We can't wait to hear the healing report, Lord. We can't wait to hear, oh God, the deliverance report. We trust you and we uplift you. This now we declare in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone have a great night. I'm enjoying y'all's again next week. Be with us, me, Sam. Hopefully Dana can be on here. We'll see if we can get someone else on here. Cause this I think they will I think they'll enjoy this shut up and listen part. Yeah. Hey, I, yeah. We, got, we, we about to go in, Sam. We about to go in. Okay. We about to let them know. Okay. All right. Y'all have to <laughs> I can shut up and listen. That's what guys tell you, everybody. Shut up and listen. I got you. No, oh, hold on. I got I'm, you. Uh, no, never mind. Well, we're getting too far in it. But anyway, see you next week. And we'll enjoy ourselves. Have a blessed and prosperous week, everyone. Jesus.